family, we are so glad that you are with us today. It is about to go down. So kick up your feet, sit back, relax, get those fingers ready to type on text and type with us. We are having our rec time tea talk. Hey, family. All right. We are so so glad let's begin. I'm going to turn over to um, Brother Davon. He will be our moderator today and the person who's going to be making sure we move our conversation along. So, Brother Davon, turn it over to you, sir. Good afternoon and good day to all. I trust and hope that you've had a wonderful week. We have gone through a series of things this week. We have gone through cooking. We have gone through um, wrapping and uh, learning how to tie tie and skin care and all this stuff. And we have also done teen talk. The first teen talk was great. And I trust and hope that with all those who are here with me, uh, we will have another good teen talk. And so today's teen talk is on relationships. Um, I just want to introduce all those who are here with me. I have Felicia James, I have Fianna James, and then I have Felicia Fifi. I call her Fifi. That's that's our name I gave her this week. Um, I have Javon here as well. I have Michael, I have Ezron, and I have um, Brother Nathan, uh, Sister Dana, and Sister Venetia, who will be our adults in the conversation to kind of help us give um, some perspectives as well as other comments, right? And so please feel free to um, ask any questions in the Facebook chat, and I will be sure to the best of my ability to get your question here, and we can just go from there. So any questions that you have that are good and, you know, that would be spicy enough for the conversation because we know that relationships can get spicy, right? And so um, just feel free as we go forward, right? So um, I'm going to ask this question first just to open up the, the conversation. Uh, what is relationships? In your eyes, what does a relationship look like? Is it just only a dating thing? Uh, is friendships um, in that, 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 um, that vicinity what is relationships to you any one of you go ahead i'm actually gonna i'm gonna start as i see you guys on my my um my screen so ezra go ahead first i want to ask you that question what is relationships uh relationships i say it's a bond between two people whether it's an intimate relationship and by intimate i don't mean sex i mean as in like you're dating or just like a regular relationship, like, or as in like friendship. I say just a bond between two people. Okay. All right. Um, Fiana, go ahead there. What is relationships to you? Are you there? Yes. Okay. Um, yes. Relationship to me is the connection between two persons. Okay, good, good. Um, Michael, go ahead. What is relationships to you? Um, I believe that relationship is like, the, um, it's basically what Fiana said, the, a connection between two people, whether it be dating relationship or maybe like a friendship or even like um, a relative. You still have a relationship with a relative. They could be your parent, cousin, auntie. That's a relationship. Okay, okay. Um, go ahead, Felicia James. Go ahead. I want to hear from you. Go ahead. Okay, yeah, I agree with um, Ezron and Fianna and Michael as well. Um, relationship is having a connection with someone. Um, as as one also said, is whether it's intimate or it's just, you know, being friends, it's just having some sort of connection with someone. It can be family-related and friendship-related, girlfriend, boyfriend, etc. but yeah. Okay, Javon, go ahead. What is your definition of relationships? Um basically what everybody said, like, it doesn't matter if it's a friendship or if it's a boyfriend or girlfriend, wife or husband, a relationship is pretty much like a bond or connection or something between two people or more. Mm -hmm. And finally, Felicia, go ahead, dear. Exactly what everybody said. <laughs> you got it easy, yeah. It's a yeah. connection mm -hmm. with a bond with two or more people. It could be two or more people. You can have a big friendship. You can have a small circle. You can have a big, intimate, 
maybe not out yeah Okay, okay. Um, I'm going to ask the, the, the adults that are here with us. Uh, Brother Nathan, what would you define as a relationship? Not to belinger the point any further than what has been <laughs> divulged among our emerging pioneers. Um, I agree with everything, especially that last point. Two more than one person is done healthfully. Mm -hmm. Not dating wise, I'm sorry. No, well, that's one thing I'm saying. You know what I mean? Friendships and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay, uh, Venetia, go ahead, dear. Venetia, are you hearing me? I think she's frozen. I think she might be frozen. Okay. Um, yes, Sister Dana, go ahead. Yeah, that's fine. I, as Brother Nate said, I don't want to echo the sense of it but it is true it is i feel like the bonding of ideas of thoughts of you know just being able to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation or communication with someone um so as you said it doesn't have to be an intimate relationship it could be a friendship kind of relationship but just someone that you have that you can just bounce things off of and share ideas and thoughts with mm -hmm. Okay, so we all have the same um, idea here that a relationship does not necessarily have to be intimate. There are levels to relationships, right? And so um, we're going to deal with, of course, uh, one level and then we can talk uh, about some other ones. But um, we're going to deal with dating, right? So um, what is dating? Talk to me. What is dating? I'm going to start with Felicia since she was able to sum up everybody's uh, response. Go ahead, Fifi. Okay, so what I think about dating is when you go out with that person, you trust that person most importantly. Because if you don't trust that person, I mean, you might be going out with a stranger and you don't know that person. Mm -hmm. That's what I can say about dating. Okay, okay, Javon. What is dating to you? Um, well, dating to me, I guess, is like, what, based off of what she said, like, you settle down with one person, or some people may settle down with multiple, but you settle Absolutely. down with one person, <laughs> and you, like, kind of get to know them even more than you already did before even setting the boundary that we're dating, and pretty much grow from there, or see what your differences is, and see if you can work to live with this person for the rest of your life okay okay michael go ahead um to add on to what everybody else is saying dating is like the next step it would be kind of like testing the waters mm. almost like you could say a free trial um i mean sometimes not it's probably gonna cost you but dating is like testing out to see like you know what you're into the type of people like you enjoy being around well partners and being partners and um dating is more of like let's say getting closer to someone mm -hmm. that's what it is to be i like that mike so do you or panel do you think that you can date multiple people if you go on with that thought of it's just free sampling so what do you what are your thoughts let's talk all together what you think i kind of like agree and don't agree at the same time with michael for me, I believe that dating is getting to know someone, right? Um, not exactly settling down with that person, but just getting to know them as an individual. That's what I believe. So, um, go, like settling down to me, like when you mention settling down, it's like courting that you know that this is where you know that this thing is leading to marriage while dating. It's like you don't know where this is going because it's a getting to know you stage. You don't know if you're going to like everything you find out about this person, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. I would like also like to pitch in. Unless you want an entanglement, then go crazy, go stupid. Um, but me personally, uh, I think it it's only should be two people. Relationships are only meant to be two people. But if you want an entanglement, like I said, go crazy, go stupid. Uh, but to me, uh, a relationship is really, getting, like what everybody else say, getting to know somebody 
really be able to support that person and just build each other up. Because you can get to know each other, but if you don't, if you don't support what each other is doing and build each other up and like plan for the future and just like know where you're going with this because a lot of people be in relationships for years and like you don't have an end goal with this like whether it's marriage kids or whatever you want out of it I think as I think when you get into a relationship you need to like have an end goal with it at least into like like let's say a couple months into it because you don't want to just be with somebody for 10 years and there's no marriage no kids there's nothing from it and, and then you just like wasted 10 years on your life for no reason Anybody like, else want to share? Go ahead. Yeah, I like that too. But I, I guess not not to be rolling Michael under the bus because that was a good answer. Um, dating, yeah, as as Mike said, for us, what I would encourage as young people is not per se dating, but maybe talking. I know people have issues with like talking or the talking scale, like, okay, what is talking? But I would say, yes, brother Nate, I see you. Nate's like, nah, let me jump in, let me jump in. But um, I feel that you should get to know each other, uh, get to know, because I know this, um, for me, for me personally, I don't want to date somebody that, that I'm not friends with first. Because at the end of the day, if anything should happen, if we should break up, it shouldn't be like, I hate you, I'm ghosting you, you've gone on my life forever. I want there to still be some kind of, we can still talk and rap, even though it might not be on that, you know, intimate level where we were before, but at least to know that we can still be friends even after we break up or whatever. But I more say would encourage talking, getting to know people, getting to see, okay, let me see. Let me holler at Brother Bill. Brother Bill and I, we have a good friendship. Let me see how we can maybe take this friendship to another level. So let's talk. Let me get to know that person to see if I want to, you know, man up or woman up and say, hey, I like you. Versus, you know, you go in and you're saying, you, get, you know, you're giving your heart out all on your sleeve. And it's like, you know, I love you. And you just started talking like for five minutes, like those things that, those things, you know, make me a little scared when I hear people talk about that. But I would say talk, get to know people. Don't put the label of dating unless it's that one-on-one -on -one kind of thing versus I'm dating Bill, Harry, Paul, John, Mark, Paulie, Luke, um, all of those people. So what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts, guys? What if I were to provoke to you really quickly that yeah, I feel like starting to pile a little bit this afternoon. So what if I would say to you that what you defined is actually in agreement with what Michael and Felicia were saying, but that's a part of the journey? I would submit to you that I believe that in the phase of talking, I believe you are I, I believe it can be done in, in the date in a date setting. Why? Because the purpose of dating is to really get to, as Felicia alluded to, getting to know somebody. So if you're really getting to know somebody, how do you get to know somebody? You've got to talk to them. So um, yes, I really believe, and yeah, I believe in just to stir the pot that you're already doing the work. As my <laughs> Michael's analogy was interesting with the free sample, but um, I. It, that, the, <laughs> But I would, I would probably submit to you that, you know, perhaps that's something that's already happening in the process when you're, quote unquote, dating somebody. Brother, um, Brother Nate, sorry, Dana, for, for better wording, it's not sampling. There is, for this right, I type agree. of thing, it is two kinds of relationships. You have romantic relationship and you have acquaintanceship relationship. So they are more into the acquaintanceship relationship for better wording instead of saying you're sampling everybody. You get yeah, it? I'm just going to have what, what the team was saying. Off what the teens were saying. No, I'm I know. I'm just kidding. correcting them so they don't think that yeah. they're going around sampling. No, it's getting acquainting with each right. other you're That's trying to be. feel out which person is the right one get it 
I could see where the sampling could come in because there might be something that I like in in Paul, but probably my other friend Bill has something else that I like. So I can I can I can kind of see that analogy of where Michael was kind of going, kind of trying to talk and get to know you know other people. Felicia, you were saying something. What were you saying? I was saying that um. For me, friendship, I think, makes it easier because, like, you get to learn different aspects of people without them realizing that you're looking at them in that sort of way, you know? Like, they won't know that you have a crush on them, but you're just looking to see how they behave in different situations or react to certain things. So, like, being friends with someone would, like, make it easier for you to, like, transition into, you know, dating or, say, courting afterwards. So yeah, that's what I would think. Funny things. That's that's how my relationship started. <laughs> my husband, a matter of fact, he tried to let me be friends with one of his cousin to figure out who I was. And we became very good friends for at, for over a year. We were very close friends. I know all his ins, his outs, everything, like everything. So first of all, for me, I wasn't even leading to that direction for us to have a relationship. But he already knows in his mind that I am the one for him. But he was just using his cousin to really figure out how is he going to tie it all in. So when he asked me the question, I was like, you're playing, whatever, and kept it pushing. And almost 20 years later, here we are still together. <laughs> Very good. So, so you, you said something there that, that triggered a question in my mind that even though in his mind, he knew what he wanted. For you, you were just like, mm -mm, no, no, like this is not where we're going here. And so I, I, I know that there's a term that, you know, um, us younger folks use. They say uh, you've been ghosted, right? So um, what is that for you? Uh, just talk to me. What is ghosting in your terminology? And have you ever ghosted someone or have you ever been ghosted? Let's, let's, let's stir the pot a little bit. I like to answer this. Uh, my definition of ghosting is like when you either like talking to somebody or in a relationship or some type of friendship, and then you just completely cut off all connection with that person without no explanation. You don't reply to their texts, you block them, delete their phone number. Like you just act like they completely don't exist. Um, have I ever ghosted somebody? I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm not going to say yes or no because I, I honestly don't know. But I haven't been ghosted by nobody, though. That's good. Come on, talk it up, talk it up. Let me hear from you guys. Um, I'll speak. I, okay. Who's speaking? Did I cut off somebody? Okay, so um, ghosted, like what Ezron said, is like you cut communication with somebody like, like immediately, you know, no warning, just out of the blue. And um, I've been ghosted a lot. You know, it does not feel good at all. It hurts a lot. But, you know, everything happens for a reason. So, you know, you just keep pushing. And I've not, I've only ghosted people for the right reasons. Like, let's say they were um, coming at me in, like, sort of like a hostile manner. Or, like, they just started, like, moving a different way. Like, once they see me, like, doing better. Because that's a, that's a major red flag. So... There's there's good ghosting and there's also like ghosting for no reason. Like people, you could be having like a regular conversation, and it's like you know what? I'm just I'm tired of you. Let me just go talk to someone else. They'll stop talking to you forever. Like you'll never hear from them again. So yes, although ghosting is seen as a negative, it's also a positive. You have to cut people off for you know to progress in life. So take that. Well, well, this is yes. Go ahead, Ezra. Go ahead. And since you saying that, yes, I have ghosted people because him saying that made me think about some situation I had because I was re I was really close friend with this person. And, like I knew they wasn't Christian then, but I had no problem with that. But one day I saw them, I saw they post something that I felt was really offensive towards my religion. 
and I just couldn't associate with my, myself with that person no more. So I really had lost all contact with them and just gave no explanation behind it. Because like she posted on her social media, like this is not like, 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 like you just posting like a broad thing after I was like, you know what? I can't, not, I'm not even gonna. I don't think she know I ghosted her though. I don't think she know. Go ahead, Javon, go ahead. Um. Well, have I been ghosted? Uh, I can't really remember, I don't think so. But I have ghosted many people for relationship reasons and friendship reasons. So I can say that ghosting could be good and bad, as Michael said. And sometimes you do need to ghost people because the way their energy or their vibe or how Christians would say it, us Christians, their spirit is not mingling or is not right with the Lord or right with your spirit or whatever. So you would have to ghost them to help. In other words, your, your spirit can't take them. Mm -hmm. Plain and simple, your spirit can't take them. <laughs> Go ahead, Dana. Yeah, um, to, uh, to answer this question, honestly, yes, I've ghosted a few people. And I don't know if there's people out there that's watching, but um, sometimes I use the Lord as an excuse. Like, you know, God um, told me that we can't, <laughs> can't talk anymore. Or, like, I would just be like, um, just totally shut off communication because ghost in, in in its essence is stop talking to somebody without telling them no closure, no nothing, no anything like that. So I guess for me to kind of, I guess, give me peace of mind, I was like, okay, well, God, if it's not your will, um, I'm just going to just block them on my space and Instagram and aim and Facebook and like, just block them. Like just, they, they never existed. So um, I don't know if I've been ghosted. That's a good question because, you know, hey, who knows? You know, you don't know unless you go back and try to hit up, like, somebody and be like, okay, I can't find them. They're, they've fallen off the face of the earth. So, yeah. Word of advice to all those who are watching. Do not use Jesus to ghost anybody. You cannot right. use the Holy don't Ghost do that. to ghost somebody. Don't do that. Don't, don't, do it. Do it. <laughs> don't, don't do it. It's not, it's not fair to the person and you can scar that person spiritually. And I think um, just thinking off of experience, I've, I've seen it and it's, it's, it's very scarring. And, you know, people don't know how to heal from that, right? So be very careful when you use, unless God really told you and you can stand on the word, don't use him, right? So here's Mother a question. Mother Davon, have yes, you yeah. been ghosted yeah. or have you ghosted yeah. anybody? <laughs> yes, let us know. Oh, boy. No. Um, no. Who did you dirty, Brother Davon? Who did you? <laughs> um, who did I have, of course, I've been ghosted. Um, I can't say many times. I don't remember how many times. But of course, um, you know, you think you're going somewhere with someone and then you never hear from them again, right? And then, um, have I ghosted persons or females um yes and i've actually done it at camp um speaking of camp and i don't think i want to go any further into that explanation but um i was a trailblazer at the time it was junior camp and um this young lady was just very persistent very 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 persistent and um she we came back she was from my district actually and so you know, we were talking for a while and then I was like, oh God, I just, I can't bother. <laughs> and it sounds bad, but it was just that. And then, you know, it just cut off from there. Um, I think she actually lost phone service or something like that. And I said, God, if you didn't cut her off, I don't know who else did because we didn't talk ever again after that. So, um, but yeah, uh, ghosting is something that is given and it is, is something that you also receive and you just have to, you know, it comes back at you. So you just got to take it. Right. So here's another question from our comments. Actually, um, I'm going to read it for you. Should two people who are getting to know each other spend time alone, uh, like Netflix, Netflix and chill. Right. So what are your perspectives? Talk up the things. Let's hear from you hold on michael let me go real quick and i'll let you go hold on. okay 
No, 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 not at all. Under any circumstances, don't do that. Because the devil try to tempt us when we're by ourselves. If you are in a room alone with somebody, and especially for us men, know how our brain operate, that thought is going to be like, ain't nobody in here. I, 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 could, I could probably do something. And then if the other person is with it, you fall right into it. And then after the first time you have sex, you're going to keep on wanting to have sex more over and over again, which is going to lead to more sin and stuff like that. So under any circumstances, don't do that. Save yourself for marriage. It's the right way. And leave that room. Leave. Or go to some public place where, where people can see you. Okay, um, although Ezron is 100% correct, um, I believe some people do have, like, good and pure intentions. Like, not everybody wants to just go out there and get busy. So um, I say if you have good intentions and, like, you know, like, you know how to say no, then I'm pretty sure, like, a movie wouldn't hurt. A puzzle, maybe, what, Cartoon Network, whatever you guys watch. Um, but, yeah, if you have good and clean intentions, like, if you're not, like, just out there to go and um you know get nasty with anybody or the person you're getting to know and i believe if you have good and clean intentions then it's not a terrible idea from a parent point of view that is a no 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 as ezra says that's the time the devil choose to step in i have a uh, 21 years old, a 14 years old, and an eight years old. The two, the 21 years old, she already knows. Uh uh. When you're on your own, you could do that. If you're living under my roof, no. My 14 years old can't even bring that question. If he's going to the movies, I drive him there, or his dad or his sister drive him to the movies, and he better give me a time. The movies is going to be over, and one of us is sitting down outside waiting. Sometimes he's like, Mom, why do you got to do this to me? No, because nothing is going to happen before time. No, that's my answer. So I have another question now, right? So we talked about- Before you go there. Okay, no sorry problem. Sorry to cut you. I was muted. I, was, I didn't know I'm, I'm muted myself. I, <laughs> I would say um, in regards to alone, the context of the question we're talking about Netflix and, and Netflix and chill, you already know how it goes down in that setting. Guard yourself against that setting. Now, mind you, I'm okay if the two of you are going out alone in a public place as Ersan was alluding to. Um be be responsible. I mean here's the thing. It, 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 you can't be out here dating in these streets if you're not emotionally fine. I know I sorry I stirred the pot so quick. You, you can't do you can't be out here and about if you're not uh, responsible about this thing because here's the thing. Yeah it's for you to know a person but it's also for the other person to know you. You can't just approach this thing selfishly and see what can I get from me out of out of when you approach that when you approach dating with that mindset, honestly, I'm gonna venture to say that maybe you're not really as ready as you think, you know, because uh you gotta be responsible. I wouldn't want to have some, you know. I'm sorry, I, I I'm not I'm not privileged to <laughs> uh, have had have had the perfect walk along those lines too. But as I got older, you know, you do understand. Yeah, it's it's not a good idea to be alone because. Woo <laughs> oh, I, I before I ask my question, I actually want to hear from the younger ladies. I want to hear your perspective. Um, is it safe to spend time with um, someone alone? Talk to me, ladies. Um, I can answer. Can I answer? Yeah. Okay. Um. I can remember a verse that says, abstain from the appearance of sin. And you spending time alone with 
a person getting to know that person you don't exactly know like if y'all are unequally yoked because again you're getting to know that person so like you don't know where that person stands like in christ and what are their beliefs and position on certain things that should be done while dating so you need to up- um, abstain from the appearance of sin so that is my view so no Oh, Brother David, you're muted, but um, <laughs> that's nice. Um, any other females, Felicia, Renell, you guys want to jump in and, and answer this question? Do you think it's okay to be alone with somebody that you like? Um, I would definitely say yes. No, I'm just kidding. No, no. Um, first of all, do you even know this person? I mean, yes, you can know the person, but you don't know so much about them. And what Sister Venetia said about taking them to movies, I don't even go anywhere. So I can't even say anything about that. She's not allowed to go anywhere. It's a difference. Uh, she said nowhere at all. That is so. They are protecting you, Fee. They are yes. protecting you. Because my daughter, she's 21 years old and she never ever did a sleepover until she started college because as females we have to protect our daughters because if we give you that opportunity to just say okay you could get up and go we are setting you up for failure we are setting you up in a path to tell a guy oh she's available so we can do whatever we want with a boy they will get away a little bit to go out because there's not too much to worry about. But with a girl, it is totally different. My daughters, they argue with me daily. Because little Tanaya, she will say, oh, mom, can I go spend the day with such and such? The answer is no. No. First of all, Tanaya is shapey, curvy. She's eight years old, but she has the body of a 10, 11 years old. I send my little girl to go out and little Tommy or little Joey think it's okay to touch Tanaya. And then Tanaya thinks that, oh, it's just little Joey. No, no. So I understand your parents don't allow you to go anywhere. I'm a mother, so I can tell you it is okay. One day in life, you will totally understand why. So don't feel any kind of way. It's for your own good. Um, to, to, to chime in, I saw somebody um, put in the comments, and I, I wholeheartedly agree, especially in the younger years, to protect the sons and daughters. I think one of the things that we, is a, one of the underlying elephants in the room is that kind of double standard, because there are a lot of sons that have a lot of things that happen to them in certain settings, I know there's no, no, I know that's not the talk, but if we we have to have the same um, boundaries and parameters, like one of the things I learned, I was privileged to to to, to you know go to um, some some of the was privileged when I was younger. One of the things that was important, and I think for me that I learned, um, and it's important that we do teach our kids this is the importance of those boundaries, especially in the social settings, and then also as parents. Get to know the parents of some of these kids because if you got the Holy Ghost, in regards, so just, I'm just speaking for the daughter from the sisters and them. If you got the Holy Ghost, you already know from the word go who's good for you, who's not good for them, and you gotta have the conversation with the children from young. Let them know why. If you're somebody that's a, if you're somebody that you know you love the Lord and you want to raise these kids right, especially when it comes to the dating scene. I think parents need to have more open conversation with their kids from teenagers so that they also began to know and make and create boundaries for themselves. I'm listening to some of y'all in the room. I can tell y'all are blessed. Y'all are among the blessed. Even if you messed up or whatever, y'all are among the blessed because you've already given yourself decided boundaries, decided parameters to say, yes, this is good for me. No, this isn't good for me. So that I think that needs to happen more. And in our faith communities, we also need to strengthen that sense for our daughters and our sons so that we can help them to decipher and discern 
where dangers may lie or what is actually good for them because it's not always all bad. So that's just my thought about that too. Um, I have one more thing to say. Um, if you know you have Caribbean parents, you're, you're lucky to have them. Just saying that, you're lucky to have them. But you're not lucky at the same time. Just let us get that straight. You lucky, but you're not <laughs> that that's your responsibility. That's I, love, you I love you, mom and dad. No offense, but just saying. <laughs> so, so here I'm gonna I'm gonna flip the question a little more now, right? So we're against spending time alone, right? So what about doing group dates, right? So say if your youth ministry decides to go bowling, right, um, and you and her are in the same youth ministry, whatever, um, and you guys decide to make that your date, right? So how do you feel about that? Um, are you guys doing this intentionally? Are you guys just gonna? flow with the rest of the crowd like how do you feel about group dating talk to me can 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 we um excuse me uh at what age at what age are you allowed to date i just want to know perfect perfect um that's that's a that's even a, a better question and then you can flow from there because that's actually one of the questions in um in a, the facebook group chat as well so go ahead and um answer that question and then we'll go back to the group dating what age do you feel is appropriate for you to start dating? Okay. Um, in my opinion, from my experiences, I feel like until you get into high school, going in high school and like college years, I would say none because elementary school and middle school, you're immature. You, you're very immature during those stages. And then majority of relationships that people get into there either don't last or it's just like playful stuff. It's not, it's not serious. So my advice, I'll say like 15 or 16, 15, 16 going up. Anything before that is just like play, play stuff. It's not, it's not, it's not serious. I said 18 years old. That means because now you can make decisions so you, you're not living under your parents' roof. Anybody who lives under their parents' rules shouldn't be thinking about having a relationship. The only relationship they need to be thinking about is their books. You understand? You need to think about graduating high school. Then after that, you have a choice to think of going to college or get a job and then you can maintain yourself in order to maintain a relationship. But not your parents maintaining you, you, that means you cannot maintain a relationship. Having a relationship means that you cannot focus on school because you're emotionally attached. Now you're starting to worry about what is he or she doing, who is everybody else talking to. So now you can't even focus on your schoolwork. So you're failing and you, you can't even understand why you're failing because you're thinking about stuff that you shouldn't even be thinking about. Relationship is when you are, when you gain what you need to gain in life already. So mm -hmm. 15, 16, that ain't no relationship because you cannot invest in that. Hold on, before you answer, Nate, let me hear a little more from the younger ones. Go ahead, Felicia James. I know you wanted to say something. Go ahead, dear. Okay, um, in my Caribbean household, 15, 16, if I am to say that I want to date, the licks I would get, no, sir, no. No, you no. got it all Can't play, walk out. Can't walk out. Plus, my father's a boss, though. It can't work. It cannot work. My mother always told me, books before boys, because boys bring babies. And now that I'm 18 years old, I'm like, I'm in college. Now is the time where like, I can actually entertain the thought. And I'm, I'm using my words carefully, entertain the thought of dating. Because I don't get to look every single way that, you know, people said that, oh, we go, I can't do that. I can't go out on date like that. No, that's not me. That's not my household. So I believe when you're emotionally ready, when you are, of age and you are that mature that you can handle that that's when i believe that you should start dating so yeah go ahead ladies and gents talk it up and then i'm gonna allow nathan to to chime in go um, ahead uh, Javon. 
Um, well, I agree with Sister Venetia, what she said about the age, like 18 should be the age that we all start dating. Because like now in this generation, as we can probably all see, at, like dating is like so popular in like what people do or what these teens do. And like, if you don't have it, what are you really doing? If you're not in a relationship or you're not talking to this amount of fans or you're not doing this and that, it's like, what are you really doing? You're like awkward, you're weird. You're like, oh, well, like, throw them aside. Like, but honestly, it depends. Like, age is, like, what I always say, age is just a number. Like, I say that 17 and up would be good as long as you have, a, like, a mature mindset of what you know what you're doing and where you want to go with this and that you're just not going into a relationship for this um, this reason or you're going into a relationship just to say, oh, I'm in a relationship. But, like, for me, I think of a mature mentality. Like, I just don't just jump into a relationship because – I want to be in one, or I want to claim that status. So. One I more thing. My answer. Oh, hold on. What? I changed my answer. Don't waste it, Venetia. I agree with you now. I changed my answer. You're right. Continue. Go ahead, Felicia James. Go ahead. I think Fifi wanted to say something. Yes. Else. One more thing. Um, for me, for me, I think that um, when kids are younger and they jump into relationships, they're opening themselves to like stuff that they're not ready for at all. And because like they're not mature enough to understand certain things and realize that certain things aren't right for them, like they take any and everything and in turn they end up growing up to be damaged individuals. Cause like most of them, if your relationship turns out really bad, you're in high school, they're like some depressed people out there, some damaged people. And, like, it's going to be hard for you at the end of the day when you're at that stage to date. It's going to be hard for you to trust people. It's going to be hard for you to open up yourself to people. You're not going to be ready, and it's going to take a longer time for you to be, like, ready to actually have a relationship with someone. That's, that's it. I'm done. Uh, go ahead, Brother Nathan. <clears throat> um, I read a book, Once Upon a Time, you should check it out um, from Ted Cunningham about young and in love. One of the things that I really liked about that book when I was reading it, um, I found out that something I'd learned from years ago, it is really about a maturity issue. But here's another thing. It's how, it's how the community, your faith community, because I guess we're, we're idealistically speaking, you know, faith community as well, family community. Is the is the right mature? I mean, the maturity. Not only just that, but also right definitions. You know what I'm saying? If you have more people that don't have right definitions, you'll end up doing even possibly a good thing. Um, bad intentions, like a deformed hand. You know what I'm saying? So, um, when it comes to like what I'm hearing, what you guys are saying, yes, it does take emotional maturity. Um, for me, if it was up to me, and here's the thing that helps. Here's the caveat: if you have Having regular healthy um, discussions with your kids and teens about relationships, maybe you can start. This is just idealistically speaking. I'm not saying this is doctrine. Maybe you can start at 16, but that's only if you've had healthy conversations leading up. 17, 18, like I said, I heard 17, 18, because here's the truth. Yeah, yes, Felicia, that happens in high school, but you got a lot of adults and young adults that the same thing happened to and they can't recover. You think that they had a high school style heartbreak too. So you have a lot of emotionally immature people in their 20s and 30s, you know, case in point. So my thing is, this is why, and one of the things I loved about that book, you said you have to have right parameters and you have to teach them from young, right original parameters. I, I know I'm jumping ahead of the gun, but this is why you want to master friendships first. Because if you're a bad friend, there's an 100% likelihood somewhere you're going to probably not be good in a dating, courting, marital relationship. Master, learn friendship. Journey in friendship. Have friendships. Have friendships with brothers. Brothers, have healthy and pure relationships with sisters. My bad. I, I, I felt a big chill real quick. But have a healthy view and healthy, positive relationships with brothers and sisters. Because if you don't learn pure 
purity in that context. There ain't gonna be no purity in your approach to dating and courting because what was not addressed in the community of faith and also what was not addressed in the context of friendships by your friends, by your peers, and by your mentors, which is another relationship we don't talk about. Let me leave that alone. But what's not addressed in those contexts always manages to creep up. So let's master friendships. Let's have healthy friendships, connections between the same opposite sex. Yes, let it be clean and unadulterated. Let it be pure. You know, the, the scenario you gave, Davon, that's where a lot of people find people where they love on, uh, that they eventually fall in love with down the line. Those social group settings. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I made a few people mad on Facebook chat. I love you. Kiss, kiss. But I'm just saying, if we manage and do friendships better, we ha will have a healthier perspective in our, our pro relationships. Until I heal from that, until I learn to do that right, I no matter what relationships I've had, that's why it never worked because I never have a, I didn't have a right perspective of friendship. So the sooner y'all learn that and take that in for all those who are listening and have healthy parameters and conversations about relationships. Yes, parents, you got to talk to your kids about relationships. As uncomfortable as that might, 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 might be. I know I stuff in her, but you got to talk to your daughters. You got to talk to your sons. Be transparent about your story. If you're transparent about your story, it's going to help them give parameters for, for right relationship, right um, context. So you got to be transparent about your story as well. That's what helps avoid all those heartbreaks. It's a maturity issue, and it must be something done in the confines, not just for two people, but in the, in, in the context of community. Brother Nate, to, to touch on that, I think it's just a, basically also a culture thing. I think that um, parents back in the days, the same way how their parents treated them is the same thing passes on. You understand? So that's why this whole approach, um, they don't even touch on it in the faith base, really. It's like a taboo. You understand? In my house, these are things that we talk about. We have days where we sit around the table, especially for my son. I have a ton load of girls that will call. And... I will go out with him and I have a ton load of girls that will approach him and don't say anything there and then, but when we get home, this is a conversation that we have and we explain to him. We told him the mistakes that we made in life and these are the mistakes that he shouldn't make. So my son he doesn't classify no girl at this age as, oh, that's my girlfriend, none of that. He doesn't do that kind of thing. My daughter is 21 and I'm proud to say the way how we, the, the concept that we placed on her up till today's day, she's like, I will never bring home someone and until I am sure this is the person I can bring to you guys and say, I want to date this person. Because, again, everybody, when their intentions are not the right way most of the times, and she doesn't want to fall in a ditch, and to hear us say, oh, he told you, but, again, we don't want them to make the same mistakes that we make. Why are you going to punish yourself when you saw the right way to go? You understand? But we have to open up to these kids and let them know that here, these are things. We're not saying that that's the rightful way, but this is, if probably you could try this way. Don't shun them from the, the conversation or uh, say a kid come to you, because as Caribbean parents, go to your parent and ask, oh, mom, do you think it's okay to have a relationship? They don't know if you're just talking about a friendly relationship. The first thing come to their mind is sex. So it's a no, no, no. You understand? So a lot of times, that's why kids go out and try. They go try because they want to know why you're telling them no. 
because you're not explaining to them why. I have a very good friend of my, she's my dearest friend. And you don't want to hear us when we start talk. She got one son. And when we catch our kids and we just tell them, just talk. And we let them talk all the foolishness. We, we chime in with them just to see where their minds are. And by the time the conversation is done, they look at us like, oh, okay. Now we understand. So it's just a culture thing. Very true. Anyone else want to say anything? Go ahead. I agree with Sister Venetia. Uh, in households, we need to be more open to talk to our kids about saying things. My household is not like that. I had to test the waters myself to figure out certain things. Wish I didn't, because I made some stupid mistakes along the way, especially in relationships. And uh, you're able to guide your kids and just steer them in the right direction if you talk about saying things. Because I was that one, like, if you told me I couldn't do something, I'm going to go test the water to find out why I couldn't do it. And I would blame that on myself and also blame that on them not telling me it in the same uh, uh, in the first place. I'm not just going to blame them because I was hard-headed. Yeah, it's it's very important. Go, go ahead, Felicia. Uh, um yes um i agree with sister venetia as well like especially in caribbean homes because there are times where as children like it's so hard for you to talk to your parents because you already know where their mind goes because of like the environment that they grew up in so like it's hard for you to have that kind of like communication between the two of well, the three of you parents parents yeah, it's hard to like communicate like your feelings and like whatever you're going through, um, relationships, etc. I would say, um, for me, it was not always easy. I think it's easier now because I'm older that we can like actually have like proper conversations about certain stuff. But like, I don't think it's not like that for like every Caribbean household. So, like, I feel like parents should be able to be open to have conversations with their children and not let their mind wonder and assume the worst before you know you get into the conversation yes and so i as you're you're all reflecting i feel like it's also important that these conversations are had because it opens up a door to teach communication as well right because if you're communicating with your parents, then you will know how to properly communicate with that person you're in a relationship. Really, every relationship needs good communication. Um, if you don't learn that now, you will learn it later and it will hurt you later when you're learning. It's better for you to learn that now, that communicate. every relationship needs uh, communication, right? So, um, so I'm just going to backtrack one more time toward Brother Nathan. Brother Nathan was talking about having healthy friendships as well so that you know how to build a relationship. So my question is, um, now that you're friends with this person, how do you know that you, um, you like that person? What is that, that changing feeling? Like you, you're, you, know, you guys have always been talking. You guys are just talking as friends, but now something clicks. What is that something for you? Like how do you know that you like someone? You can't stop thinking about them. When they leave you in red and you feel some type of way about it. Uh, but I'll say like, when you just like, every single day that person name is in your head, you always think about them, you think about their well-being, wonder if they're okay, wonder if they're good, like kind of like obsessed with them. Uh, not in like no crazy way, but you get, I hope you get what I'm trying to say. And, uh, just love that person like so much that like you feel like you can't live without them. Go ahead, talk to me, ladies, gents. Talk to me. Um, I guess I'll go. But um, for me personally, um, like after being friends with them and watching like what they do in certain situations, like I guess like whatever whenever they're like showing me attention, it's like, it's more, it's like 10 times or two times more better, like more exciting, more, it just makes a day pretty much. 
Like you get more happy. Like as Ezra says, when they name pop up in your phone, when they text you or when they text back or something like that. So, yeah. Anyone else? Go ahead. Let me hear from you. Anyone, anyone. Michael, let me hear from you. You haven't spoken in a while. How do you know that you like someone? Um, you know, uh, it's your, oh, hold on. Hello? Go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, it's like an inside feeling, like, you feel, I don't you get, like, butterflies when they come around. Um... Like everybody else was saying, like you can't stop thinking about them. They're on your mind a lot, and like when they text you, you know, you like quickly respond, like in 0.5 seconds, you just jump at the phone. You waited for them to text you all day, stuff like that. That's yeah, that text back is key, boy. That text back is key. Mm. Renell, I want to hear from you. I I haven't heard from you yet, and so I have to pick on you. You know, I have to. Uh, when do you know that you like someone? Well, uh, me personally, it's like the type of conversations that we have. Like, for example, like if we can talk about, let's say, God or something then I know, like, I like you. But, like, if you, like, talk about just, like, I don't know, like, Fortnite or a car or just something that's not interested, then, yeah. Okay, so there has to be, there has to be similar interests. I like that. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Um, and so... Um, I'm going to ask one more question and I, I, I'm going to switch over if I have enough time after we finish this question. But um, so how do you deal with heartbreak? Uh, how do you deal with heartbreak? Let me do this. Heartbreak? I, um, Hold on. Let I, me do this. Go ahead. Do this. I've been to way too much experience. Let me do this. I'm an expert on this. Let me do this. So... Uh, where do I begin? Okay, okay. As an expert on this, I can I can answer this. Uh, I say the best way to deal with heartbreak is listen to music, grab you grab you some food, and uh, and just do that for a little bit. And then after, I say really like meditate, like think about all the things that happened that in a relationship, why that relationship ended. And sometimes a heartbreak can be a blessing. Be, heartbreak can be a blessing because that person probably wasn't good for you in the first place. And you have to like think of stuff like, you have to think of stuff like that. And, you know, probably cry a little bit. If you're on your, if you're a guy, you're on your homies, don't, don't cry because you know how that's going to end. Uh, but if you just, or just like go talk to somebody or like something like that. Okay. Um, that's what Hi, Jay. um well for me it's basically what he said like i normally like like listen to music eat food or like i go to somebody and ask them for advice or stuff like that but like based off of me my personal life like people come to me for advice about like heartbreak a whole, whole lot of times like about relationships and stuff like that so like i can like really i'm not like an expert but like i know like different ways like I tell them okay so I know you're heartbroken about this person so and so but you also got to remember that you still have people that in your life that love you like there's still people you can't just fill yourself up with that one person to make yourself happy there's God that loves you that's still there with you that you have your mom you have your dad you have so you have so many people that still love you and you can't just stick to that one person to fill you with joy and fill you with happiness and stuff like that. Come on, talk up the things, talk up the things. All right. Break. All right. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. For me, cry, cry a lot, cry, <laughs> cry until you feel better. And then well, while crying, eat, sleep, and then come to the realization and realizing yourself that, this is not the end of the world. Like, 
there's so much better things that can happen that can come from this that can stem from this um also for me dress up learn to do makeup take a lot of pictures do things that will make me happy you know like to distract me from whatever is hurting me and then you know, it'll come a day when you just don't feel it anymore and then you're ready to move on. And, you know, you've grown as a person. Like, remember that that person was a life experience. Like, you've learned and you've grown from that experience. So, yeah. Now y'all see why I said, at your age, you shouldn't be dating. Because now you have having heartbreak on your parents' budget. <laughs> because now we like are that. home and like we that. are wondering what like is that. wrong with little Jamie what is wrong with little Sarah what is wrong why is my kid acting this way now we getting upset not realizing that because y'all went out there go have a deep emotional connection to somebody now you're having a mental breakdown of someone that probably wasn't even meant for you from day one. See? Uh -huh. Okay, so um, if you break, if you go into a heartbreak, find another person. I mean, oh, let me stop. Okay, let me stop. Let me stop. <laughs> Let me stop. <laughs> do, not, do not do that. Sometimes during a heartbreak, you make some of the worst decision ever. Do not do that. I'll try to okay. cut you off, Felicia, but don't do that. Don't do that. Because then you can end up having sex with somebody. I love it. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. No, she was joking, but I love it. That, that was some some was of y'all say, some of y'all say, so here, y'all not that safe. Y'all grown up, y'all ain't that safe, but we don't want to have that kind of church tonight. But Felicia, some people have that mindset. Let me tell you something right now. Felicia, you're, you're jokes. Cause you, you having them cats lit, lit up laughing in the room. Let me tell you something right now. Oh, if that oh, sometimes a parent, I, I can only imagine like how vexed you would be if like that, something like that went down. But one caveat is, is that you're their first community that can help them rebound. Something that Javon said, I don't know why it stuck out to me. Um, yeah, reformation. What happened is not going to define you. No matter how ugly, no matter how simple the breakup was, it's not going to define you. This is why I'm going to keep saying this. If you have you a good circle of friends, like um, Felicia James was saying, y'all you, need to have a girls' night. Y'all need to have a bros' night. Y'all need to have a night where y'all just chilling, not even thinking about it. Let the best of who you are come back into play because you know what? What happened in your life? Um, there's people in your life. Tyler Perry, as Medea said this one time from a play, I'm going to quote it. There are people in life that are either a blessing or they're a lesson. And um, if those that, that end up not being the blessing in your life in regards to friends or, 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 or even the, the dating, the marriage concept, they were a lesson. But the only way you will rebound from them lessons is if you fall back on that community and let them, you know, be honest with them. Don't come out here lying and then badmouth the person and you don't take responsibility for your part that you might have played in the circumstance going down. Listen, get far back from that community. They'll reaffirm you. They'll let you know, listen, this is not the end of the world. We got your back. I think those are the best words you can hear at a very low place in your life. I got your back. No matter what happens, I got your back. If you have people like that, the healing process, gets easier and it gets better rather it gets better because you have you're not walking through it alone it's like when you're grieving somebody that you lost yeah you have that time when you do it by yourself but the best time to grieve is when you process that grieving in a sense of community as well where people are reaffirming you and people are uh reminding you of who you are and who you're supposed to be and it's just like you know i love the fact you got to fall back on community you can grieve for a minute by yourself but don't stay there because that's how the enemy will play in your brain and remind you of things and try to tell you things that you're not. Fall back on community. My part about that in Jesus. Oh, I have something else to say. Um, okay, now I forgot. Um, oh, yeah, okay. I, I remember. I remember. Um, so, basically, if I was in a heartbreak, if I got into a heartbreak or something like that, I wouldn't cry. 
Reason why? Because that person is just a person. It's not like they're God. You're, it's, not, it's not like you're, you're um, leaving God. It's just a person. And I would do a girls' night, something like that, to get back to myself, to who I am. But all I have to say is that person is just a person. You don't have to cry for that person. So, so true. So true. And for me, with heartbreak, I love to go to the mend of broken hearts, which is God. I always turn back to God to pour back in, refresh me. I may have, you know, sometimes you lose yourself in another relationship or sometimes you lose who you are. So I love to go back to God from just to remind me and to speak back into me who I am. I'm loved. I am beautiful. I am fearfully, wonderfully made. You have the best in mind for me. You know the plans that you're thinking towards me. So just really to build back in my spiritual, build up my spiritual uh, man as well. So that's how I like to do. Because sometimes with the music too, like it, that gets tricky because if I really get into my feelings, I put on a Monica So Gone or I put on something that's like crazy that fuels my anger that might... Um, really speak to what I'm feeling. You know what I'm saying? So with music, for, especially for me, I love music. So if I'm listening to what she do, I do better. What she do to make you, you know, like you get in your feelings and you get into your emotions. So just be careful, especially with that music thing. Make sure you listen to something that's like encouraging you or uh, speaking life back into you. Go ahead, Felicia. Felicia, okay. and then wants to say something. Go ahead, Felicia. Okay, so something to, uh, um, to add on to the music thing. Um, in this generation, this music thing is like a the weirdest thing in the whole, oh my gosh. Like, they be posting they stuff on social media. They be like, and it's just kind of confusing. Like, who are you telling this to? I mean, you're telling it to the person, but like, you're doing too much now. Come on. I agree with what Felicia said because people do that and then that's just setting yourself up to like making yourself vulnerable for people to come in and, and attack you at this time because they know you're at a weak point. But I also got a question because we're stuck on relationships too, but I want to like stray away. But I want to ask like, do you think that heartbreak only comes from relationship or can it come from um, family, um, missing goals, jobs? Even church folk, it can come from people like talking down on you in church or talking down to you on a job or something like that. So it, it can. I totally uh, agree with that. Heartbreak can come from pretty much anywhere because once you have a strong um, feeling attached to something, once it's gone or just any problem happens, it it it, it hurts. Also, too, uh, the great question, Javon. I ask the question, what does heartbreak mean? Something that broke your heart. <laughs> Duh. So it doesn't just have to be. <laughs> Sometimes I think we put <laughs> too much onus on the dating relationship aspect. Sometimes your friends can break your heart. Betrayal causes heartbreak. Uh, gossip about you causes heartbreak. When you find out that the root of the gossip came from your friend. That causes heartbreak. You're right. People in church can break your heart. Somebody say something bad about you or somebody embarrasses you and they're not in a public um, church setting uh, and that's not done in love, that's heartbreaking. It could be traumatizing. But, um, you know, let me, yeah, that's another deep-rooted word. For some, it can end up being that. But, Anything that breaks your heart. Your friends can break your heart. Um, unfortunately, your leaders can break your heart. Shoot. America would say, man, Trump as president broke their heart, but that's another conversation. For another <laughs> but um, no, anything that breaks your heart, anything that breaks your emotional psyche for a moment or sets it back is a heartbreak. Also, remember, a heartbreak is anything that causes distress on you. So it Anything that causes a distress is a heartbreak. Anything. And the worst heartbreak is from your family, especially your immediate family. 
that is the worst heartbreak ever because now that definitely plays on your psyche that makes you got trust for no one no matter how close that person gets to you your trust is not there is no trust so that's why i as a parent i try my best i try i'm not the best parent but i try my best to let my children have that trust in me. And I try my best not to disappoint them. I will go above and beyond. So my children will just, no matter what anybody wants to tell them about me, they know who I am because I try not to cause them distress. So that makes them go out and they will spread love. You understand? Because the, it's the worst. And a broken, a broken home cause dysfunction outside, no matter what. So it got to start from home. Has to start from home. So that's why you got to be mindful who you put or who you give your heart to. So you always got to search, search. Not all the time the people that you give your heart to or the people that you think has your heart. No. So that's something you got to think about. So, so my question now becomes, how do you deal with those type of heartbreaks? Let's shift a little more now because the thing is, is that we're talking about broken communication sometimes in Caribbean homes and those things and such alike. How do you and your, we, we never know, we might be helping somebody out there who's watching us. Um, some people may have been heard from something that their parents said or whatever. How do you um, deal with that? And how do you get your point across that you hurt me and that I want to talk about it and, and, and this and that and the third? Come on, talk to me. I'm not going to lie to you, it's hard. It is hard. Uh, Brother David, you know, you know that situation I told you about last year in camp? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to expose the situation because this is on live. If it was just us, I would talk about it, but I don't want to put it all on live like that. That's fine, that's fine. The situation I told you about, that had me messed up. Like, it, it was, it was very hard to be able to, like, go to that situation and, with how my parents is, it's like whatever happens in the house, you stay in the house. So if something happens or like whatever, it stays in the house. And I just I I couldn't I couldn't deal with that mentality no more. And I was like, you know what, I gotta go talk to somebody. I ended up going to my guys council the whole month of June last see I was in my guys council office almost every single day. And she she kinda went through this, she went through this exact same situation I went through. So not only she gave me a professional help, she also understand what I was going through because she went through that same situation. And it took me, I think, until like let's say five, six months after that situation happened, like ended to be able to like forgive um the people the person who like led to all the heartbreak. And I say really go and talk to somebody and really i say professional i'll say more professional because they can help you better but if you obviously can't afford that find somebody that you trust the most and you know i trust my son i trust brother davon so much that i went and told him about it and he was able to help and this was already when i told brother davon this was already after like i was in my um, guys counselor office and this is it was uh, when I was on my way to like re re um re reattaching the heartbroken endness. Yeah, it's very good. I want to jump in on that. Um, it's very 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 important to talk to somebody. The Bible is all about relationships. If you, when you read from Genesis all the way to Revelation. It talks about relationships. And please, young people, find other, a youth leader or find an adult. Find someone that you can talk to and, and confide in and say, I'm going through such and such a thing and I need help. It is okay to say, I need help. 
I went through school for uh, marriage and family therapy. And one thing that I saw, it said Jamaicans don't go to therapy. And I was just like, oh, no, stop talk about it. Stop, stop it. Stop it. I was so upset because I'm like, why, why is that studies? And I mean, studies have shown that Jamaicans don't go to counseling. and they say, oh, we'll, we'll just pray or we'll just keep it in our house. We just, we won't go out and get help to build healthy relationships with our children or with our spouse or with uh, whoever, whoever it may be. So I'm telling you on this live stream that it is okay, as Brother Ezran said, to seek counseling, to seek someone who is older than you, that is more experienced, that has o even overcome what you're going through. And there's so many adults out there, and I feel sometimes we, we, we might have to also address that too, that um, there's this mentality that young people don't want to go to adults, especially in the church, because, oh, they're hypocrites, or they spread our business around, or they don't mean good for us, no way. But there are people in our church who are trustworthy, who are trained um, as counselors or are people who can talk to you that can help you walk through whatever situation of life that you are going through, especially with heartbreaks, especially with just even just different things that you're going through. Let somebody walk alongside with you, talk with you, build a relationship with you that they can tell you what's right, what's wrong, or even just to speak into you spiritually as well, because even with the brokenness, you could be a broken spirit, you could be of a broken heart. It just it's just so many things that you get, so many things that could be broken because we are human and we are breakable. And there's no human that is so super that does not need somebody else. So I just wanted to leave that with y'all. I also like to add on, don't ever try to um, handle it by yourself. And that's exactly what I used to do. Anytime I went through anything, I knew, like, I learned from the, I learned from an early age that my family was not the right people to go to. And uh, I had trust issue with saying, like, people and stuff like that. So I couldn't go to them and I couldn't go to my family. So I just had to deal with everything on my own. I just had to just go about with it. And then when that situation happened, I just, I just, I, I kept trying to handle on my own, kept trying to handle on my own. But I remember this one day I went to school, it was a Monday. That whole day I was so pissed off. Like the littlest thing would have set me off. And once I realized, I was like, you know what? Let me talk to somebody before I put hands on somebody. And not gonna lie to you, that's one of the best decisions I've made in my entire life. Yes, one of the... the um most important things for us um is communication right and um we've talked about this and it, it it's so funny how things kind of just tie right back into each other we talk about um with the church that a lot of times we feel as if the older folks don't pay attention to the younger folks um but then if you hear even the perspective of some of the older folks which is very interesting they are willing and waiting to hear from young people. That's one thing. And two, even for them, when it was their time, when they were young, they felt the same way. And it's coming like it just trickles down. And, and I feel like it's because of a lack of communication. There was, I think communication is that, that gap bridger, that the bridge, the thing that bridges the gap, praise the Lord. You understand what I'm saying? And um, I feel like, with our culture, we love our people. Please do not leave from this live believing that we hate Jamaicans, we hate Caribbeans. Love we you. love them. Happy Emancipation Day to all of you. God bless you. But we also do have flaws and we have to work through them for the sake of the generations that are coming after us, right? Communication is key. Like Venetia said, with her children, she talks with her children, right? And, and that's helping to build them to become better, right? And so for our children who are here with us, right? We also have to build relationship, proper relationship, something that is lasting that we can pass from generation to generation, right? Um, and so I have one more question for you um, from our Facebook Live. Uh, the question is, what are your limits and how and or how do you know your limits? 
how do you know your limits are investing your time and attention and trust in someone you are seeing so basically um i would say i would kind of call that like red flags like what are what are things that just you just don't tolerate what are those things what are your limits um how far would you go in relationship like what what are those things like how do you know those things That's good. At least for me, I know if there's somebody that does not love God, does not honor God, does not believe in God, don't believe. No, we're not even going to con continue a conversation together because as a Christian and as a Bible stress is about being unequally yoked. I don't want when I get into a problem, I can't turn to my partner and say, please pray for me. I'm going through this situation. They'd be like, or they'd be like, oh, um, that's all right. Go to church. Or you, you'd be all right. Just, you know, no. If you can't speak the words of God into me or speak life into me, I'm not trusting you with anything because if you don't trust the God who made me, I don't trust you. I agree with that, Sister Dana, but I also disagree with it at the same time because you can be in a relationship with somebody that's not Christian and help them to be able to become Christian. Because a lot of people that met together, one person was Christian, another person isn't. But there needs to be a willingness, though. There needs to be a willingness to be able to change, to be able to come on the good side of life. If there isn't a willingness for it, and they just like, you know what, I'm not going to do that, I don't believe in that, nah, 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 then I say just don't do not do it. But if you see a willingness in them to be able to want to live the life of God, then I say, I say go for it. But if there's no willingness in there, don't waste your time. Anyone else? I'll say, I'll mm -hmm. say, I'm, I'm going to, I want to challenge that notion also. In the context of dating, I wouldn't take that approach only because missional dating is very draining for your soul very draining for your soul meaning that you have to really invest yourself and you almost become that person bad if you're not careful um you can become an idol to that person so in the context of i guess to say dating the missional dating thing that's not a healthy thing now in the context of friendship yeah that's that's a good idea be a light to that person they may know to come to know christ or they're better because they have you in their life you know um to answer that original question i would say that what would help is not only knowing red flags but also a concept i i talk about even like with green flags knowing what's good for you you know what's good for you knowing your parameters knowing your strengths knowing your weaknesses because once you have a good, a better understanding of who you are, you have a great understanding of what you will not tolerate or what you will not accept. You also will have value. You'll place right value in your friendships, right value in your relationships. Hear me good. Look for the red flag, but you've got to know what your green flags are. You've got to know, okay, I can engage here because they have this or they're showing this or I'm going to withdraw my their access to me on this level because they're not good for me in this aspect because once you know your value and know who you are you'll know what limits you need to set on certain people there's certain prospects and certain godly uh, uh brothers and sisters out there because they're godly doesn't mean that they're for you but they're godly you know they're your brother they're your sister if you know who you are then have a healthy view of the world around you believe me you can have healthy friendships and relationships because you know where your limits are and know what your limits are. In the context of dating, this is something that's gradual. I'm sorry, I'm taking up the time to do it. This is it's gradual because access, access is going to be given by how I define the relationship. If, it's, if we're defining this as we're dating, we're just getting to know each other, you don't need to know everything about me until it gets exclusive and we're moving towards courtship. I, I see, I deserve, there's a possibility something can kick start here We're in regards to the long term, getting married and stuff like that. So in, in regards to limits, you've got, that's why you got to know your flags, know your red flags, but also know your green flags. The stronger you know who you are is the better you will know how to invest into knowing somebody further or pulling back 
for the sake of guarding your heart. Because the Bible still reminds us, guarding your heart is important. That's where the issues of life come from. Doing this, having limits, having boundaries, is guarding your heart. So consider all of those things. Guard your heart. Don't just look for the red flags. Spend some time getting to know yourself. Know your flags. Know your red flags, but also know your green flags. Anyone else? Anyone else? What are some limits for you guys? Um, based off what Nathan said, pretty much summing it up, just to know your self worth and set a bar. Well, not not a high high bar, so that you don't seem so high and that nobody can get next to you. A high no high bar. Food. Yeah, <laughs> nobody can get, <laughs> but still have like, you know, you want this and this person that you want to see this person or to see these traits in this person, but you still have to make sure that people are not perfect. You're not perfect. So you will sometimes have to bend some of your traits in order to find love, I guess. But like, I don't want to make it seem wrong. Like, you, sometimes you will have to bring down the bars sometimes because not Compromise. everybody is going to meet that standard that you want, that perfect, that perfect man, that perfect woman that you want. So sometimes you will have to lower the bar for people, but still to know your self-worth and know that there's still an area in your heart that God can only reach and that only people that have met your standards or met your goals of godly or spiritual or whatever that they can reach that part in your heart. Set that aside. Make sure that that place is locked up until you're married or until you feel that you're ready to give that key to that person and open up to them. Also, remember, um, in a relation that doesn't um, has God in it, it's not a relationship. It's not going to go nowhere. Nowhere. Because trust me, it will be rough. So if you got a relationship and at least none of you could say, let's pray. It's going nowhere, nowhere. It's all about, it's going to be all about what we can bring to the table. And that's it. And, and I, if I could just add something here, um, I think with knowing your worth and knowing your value, you also know, you need to know where your spirit man stands, right? Because especially if you're going to go into um, an unequally yoked relationship, right? You can't go into the, the, the high hopes that love is going to convert your, 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 um, your mate. You have to know yourself to know that if this person was, is going to compromise my spirituality, you need to know if you're strong enough to deal with it, right? Because if you're not, you'll be swayed like a, 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 a leaf on the floor, right? So those are very important things as well, knowing your spiritual worth as well as your, your natural and your, your human worth, right? Uh, anyone else? Go ahead, Nate. I want to say something else here because I see a, a couple of comments was flying while you were talking about that. Um, I, to, to answer one of the questions, um, what is the time limit? Weeks, days, or months? To me, and and just being honest, there are some people who have that thing figured out within months, under a year. Um, I heard Steve Harvey say something on his talk show when he used to have this talk show that with men, with men, they generally know within six months if that person is worth marrying or worth bringing home to their family, usually, usually. Here's the reality. We cannot forsake the human condition. Some people have developed late. Also, some might have blossomed early. Some people, it might take them a couple of weeks because they know their flag. This is kind of why I'm reiterating it. They know who they are. I, don't, I think in a lot of cases, we've not done a good enough investigation on ourselves, on our story where we've come from so that we know how to tunnel vision, have a better tunnel vision or a better vision, excuse me, towards how we approach dating. Um, for some people, I've heard stories, people figured it out in the first two months and they were married within the year. I've heard people say it took me a year and a half. That's okay. Everybody's, everybody's journey is different. But usually, for a man, I'm going to speak as a guy, yeah, you will know within under a year 
if that somebody has a, that prospect. Usually will. Usually. But if you're following, if you're going off of, off of loneliness, another thing that I'm going to talk about today, or if you're going off of it in an unhealthy way, it might take longer. But the, there's no set equation. It's about the maturity of the person. And that's why the context of community helps to draw that out. If your community sees and, 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 and you're accountable to a community and, and you have good relationships, good friendships, you're more than likely idealistically setting yourself up to being a right um, dating um, frame. So if there's, no, there's no equation. I can't say A squared plus B squared equals healthy marriage. I, I can't say that. But I, what I will say is you do need to know your parameters. You do need to know who you are. I think people just groping around in the bushes socially has caused a lot of problems and a lot of um, unhealthy, toxic connection. So, yep, step back, get to know you, get to know the person, and then you'll set the right limits. Wonderful. And so we, um, I hate to be the, the bearer of bad news, but we are running out of time. But I do want to um, just get a, a last comment from all of our panelists. Um, in regards to relationships, uh, what is your takeaway, whether it be friendship, um, intimate relationships, whatever it is, what is your final comments? I'm going to start once again with Ezran, and I'm going to go as I see the, the, the Zoom. Go ahead. Uh, you should pick, uh, my thoughts and what I basically got is that pick and choose whoever you become friends with or who you give your time to. Um, make sure you know your limits. Uh, know exactly what you want out of stuff, um, a friendship or a relationship. If it's not going your way, um, communicate. Communication is the key to any friendship relationship. And uh, if when you communicate, like over and over, like I say, after like three times, like because you know that after three times, like you shouldn't keep on going back with something. And uh, after that, just decide is this person a benefit to my life is this person a lesson like just try to figure it out so that way you don't continue to waste your time on people because time is one thing that we waste a lot and you could be using that time for something else using that time to build you up more and just do you develop your career and just do other things that will benefit you more good good thank you fifi your final comments um it's not a long thing to say, but all I can say is choose your friends wisely. Make sure you know them, because if you don't know them, you're just talking to a stranger. Um, I mean, make sure you're at the right age. And I think you should, to me, I think you should keep your circle small. Big circles, they just, they, they affect the most. All right, J Javon, go ahead, your, your final comment. Um, basically, to know your self worth, know your limits, and don't get in relationships at this <laughs> point. <laughs> don't. Um, well, until you know that you're ready, or until you probably pray about it, and God tells you that you're ready or He's ready for you to be in a relationship. Renell? Um, what I taken from this is that know your self-worth don't just jump into a relationship like get to know the person be friends and then y'all could you know date or whatever and yeah wonderful thank you and then Fel felicia and fiana since y'all are so close together <laughs> okay so for me it's know who you are Know your self worth. Know what you stand for. Um, know what you're striving for at the end of the day. Because if you um, strive for nothing, you're gonna fall for anything, and that is not gonna end up good for you at the end of the day. Regardless of friendship, relationship, family wise, anything, just know your worth. Know who you are. Know what you strive for, and that's it. Yeah. Go ahead, yeah. Oh, yes, I okay. Um. First off, you need to plan, know what you want in life, and just go, go for it. Keep God first. And if you're going to be in a relationship with the opposite, with the opposite sex, um, you guys should be equally yoked because it's better and it's going to be easier on the relationship. 
Wonderful. Thank you so much, ladies. Nathan, then Venetia, and then um, so forth and so on. Go ahead, Nate. Oh, okay. Listen, if you want to have the healthy flow of relationships, listen, there's a DNA to it. The Bible says, love the Lord with all your heart. And the same thing, love your neighbor as yourself. Listen, fam, get to know God. That's the spiritual side. But um, in the context of what we're talking about today, be a better friend. I'm going to challenge y'all. Be better friends. Be better friends to people, man. Um, have yourself a healthy inner circle. And as you go about dating, and when that time comes, keep your circle in with the process. Why? Because they'll help you stay objective. Because what we didn't talk about is that you can have a lot of butterflies going up and down and, and infatuation. And if you ride in that thing by yourself, you crash hard by yourself. Keep your inner circle with the moves that you're making, man. All you need is two or three. You'll go a long way. You'll be better for it. So be a better friend, and it's going to bless every relationship thereby afterwards. You're dating, you're courting, you're marriage. And I'm praying that for y'all in Jesus' name. Thank you. Sister Venetia, go ahead, dear. Okay. Um, one, keep realistic goals or expectations. Don't expect too much of others because that can give you heartbreak Two, keep your life balanced try your best to keep your life balanced because when your life is not balanced you know what that means you get thrown off and thirdly i would say communicate communication is the key to a successful life when you don't communicate Communicate doesn't mean just talk. It means be effective, whether to friends, family, whoever it is. And you will get your point across without you even have to argue or fight. And that's my three tips. Sister Dana, go ahead. Am I closing? Are you... Um... I'm just going to... Um, yes. Oh, um, no, say your final thoughts. I'm sorry. Say your final thoughts. Okay, you're gonna push it back to me? Yes. Okay, <laughs> sure. So um, my final thoughts, uh, one of the scriptures that I really love is in Psalms of Solomon um, 8 verse four. It says, daughters of D Jerusalem, I charge you do not arouse or awaken love until it's so desired. And that's the scripture that, I've, that I love and hold so dear to my heart because the things that go along with love, the responsibility, the things you have to do, it's a lot. And if you're not in the place to fulfill your role in a relationship or your role in a friendship, whatever it is, just don't, relationship-wise, don't stir up love until you believe that you are ready and you seek God and you become the person that you want to be um, in that relationship. So go ahead, Brother Davon, and then I'll close. Yes, uh, my final thoughts for you, my dear, lovely viewers. Um, relationships are necessary, right? Uh, relationships are key. Uh, friendships are key. You need people in your corner. You need people to surround you in those tough times, on those moments where um, you feel alone. Talk to somebody. Find somebody that you can trust, right? These are all things that are necessary to life. We need each other. I need you and you need me. We have to rely on each other because we are all, some of us are struggling, 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 believing that we're alone. I have news for you today. Uh, the great singer Michael Jackson says it. You are not alone. I am here with you, right? So don't feel alone. Don't feel like you are struggling by yourself. I gospel, that. <laughs> I have hope for you today that someone else is going, what, going through what you're going through or they've overcome and they are here to help you. Don't feel alone. Relationships are necessary. Uh, be a part of a relationship. Find people you can trust, whether it be in church, in your family. If it's not your parents, find your auntie, someone, your uncle, your grandmother, someone that you can trust because you are not alone. Right, and I thank you for joining us. Sister Dana will close up, but I thank all of our panelists. Um, today we have our friends from Guyana, the James, we have friends from Brooklyn, from New Jersey, and from South Ozone, and all the way up in Albany where the trees are falling in our backyard. <laughs> 
uh, we are so glad and we are so happy and we thank you for being with us in this team talk, of course, that we hope that next year we will be able to, to touch one another and talk to one another and feel the atmosphere of the room and we will have more conversations like this. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Back over to Sister Dana. Well, they even just took my job, so Darren. God bless you. No, you're fine. Please remember tonight at 7 p.m., please join us for our final session of camp. At 6.45, we're going to be playing some flashback clips and some things that we've been doing in, in camp. So you don't want to miss that. And we'll be announcing the winners of our different challenges and things that we've been doing this week. God bless you. We love you. See you all at 6.45. God bless you.